This is Armchair Quarterback with Andrew Jones, presented by Jim Johns of Michael. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Joyce. Welcome to week six of Armchair Quarterback presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches in the Pikeville Commons. Armchair Quarterback's a weekly high school and college football show spotlighting local high school and college football in the mountains. Tonight we'll have a complete recap of last week's high school football from around the region, top individual performances, upsets and blowouts, this edition of Armchair Quarterback will include highlights from Shelby Valley, Pike Central, Belfry, Mingo Central, and Floyd Central. And tonight we'll unveil the Super 7 High School Football Rankings and this week's AP. College football, the Cats are now 3-1. The Upike Bears have evened their record at 2-2. Two two. We'll get to those a little later. We have a lot to get to. Last week's scoreboard is loaded with blowouts, shutouts, and crazy finishes. Check these out. It was Belfry, 63-8 winners over Sheldon Clark. Breathed County held off Knott Central, 50-43. Harlan, Blank Jenkins, 62-0. It was Hazard, 29-7 over Prestonsburg. Johnson Central defeated Boyd County, 58-0, while Leslie County rolled over East Ridge, 42-15. Paintsville defeated Lawrence County, 43-14. Perry Central with a 44-34 win over Letcher Central. Pike Central rallied to defeat Floyd Central 35-34. It was Floyd, uh, Powell County 50-12 over McGoffin County. Shelby Valley defeated Betsy Lane 42-6. Each week we review the best of the best performances around the region. We love to spotlight huge stat lines. Time to look at who shined last week. This week's top performances from Eastridge, Mickey Thompson had 14 tackles. Floyd Central, Ethan Howard, 20 tackles. Dylan Cotto, 160 yards rushing and two touchdowns. From Hazard, Bailey Blair with 283 yards total offense and four touchdowns. Reese Fletcher added 15 tackles defensively along with Braxton Whitaker. From Johnson Central, Blake Gamble with 115 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Lawrence County's Noah West ran for 108 yards. He's now at 1150 rushing through six games. In other top performances this week from Mingo Central, Jeremy Dillon, 216 yards total offense and four touchdowns. Dawson Eli with 193 total offense and two scores. Tanner Smith of Paintsville with three touchdowns. Perry Central's Jaden Neese. 264 yards rushing and four touchdowns. Jacob Woolham had 19 tackles and two interceptions. From Pike Central, Seth Kahn had 318 yards of total offense and five touchdowns. Isaiah Hess with 105 yards rushing and Logan Hillerman doing it defensively with 10 tackles. From Shelby Valley, Seth Johnson had 339 yards on the ground and three scores. Dalton Meade added 246 rushing and two touchdowns. Some huge performances and after those big games, we've updated some season stats. Here are the top five touchdown guys in the area. With 17 touchdowns already, Noah West of Lawrence County, Jaden Neese of Perry Central with 14 touchdowns, Seth Kahn has 13, the Shelby Valley running back Seth Johnson with 11, Dawson Eli from Mingo Central with eight, along with Tanner Smith of Paintsville with eight touchdowns. And the top five area rushing leaders, three already over 100 or over 1,000 yards and a couple closing in on that 1,000 yard mark. Noah West of Lawrence County with 1153. Seth Johnson of Shelby Valley with 1126. Jaden Neese of Perry Central, 1,098. While Seth Kahn of Pike Central is closing in at 842 rushing. Dawson Eli of Mingo Central with 716 yards rushing through this week. Of course, each week we take a look at game trends. Last week we saw games across the bluegrass trending to be more competitive, but still plenty of huge offensive outputs. 70 plus points in a game, there were two of those. 60 plus, 13 games, and there were 27 games with 50 plus points. The low score of the week, 12 to six. Somebody's still playing defense. And shutouts, there were 15. 
One possession games, a little more competitive. There were 22 and two overtime games in the Bluegrass. We've got a lot more armchair quarterback on the way. Stay tuned. We'll have more highlights this week's AP and Sports Guys Super 7 rankings, UPike, UK, and more. It's Armchair Quarterback presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches in the Pikeville Commons. has been my definition of fresh since 1983. If you're looking for a fun, safe, friendly atmosphere to achieve your fitness goals, be sure to check out Heavenly Strong, a Christian fitness group that supports your physical and spiritual journey to wellness. Call 606-434-9914 for more information. No matter where you are on your journey to physical and spiritual wellness, Heavenly Strong is here for you. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted. Late hours and open on Saturday, too. Howard Family Pharmacy. It's the high school football game of the week, presented by Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the state champion Belfry Pirates head north to challenge the surprising Floyd Central Jaguars. The Game of the Week airs Saturdays at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB-TV. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback. We'll take a look at more highlights. The Shelby Valley Wildcats hosted Betsy Lane at Tico Field Friday night. It was homecoming for the Wildcats in a double-A district matchup. A beautiful night at Valley. Shelby Valley offensively. That's Seth Johnson. Already over a thousand yards rushing on the season. That's another six. He goes untouched. Johnson, number five, you'll see him do it again. He gets to the corner. Down the far sideline, that's a 29-yard touchdown run. Johnson finished with 339 and three touchdowns. Now Dalton Mead will do it defensively. Here's the double pass, and the pass is picked off. Interception for Dalton Mead. Now Mead will get his number called from the backfield. He'll take it right side into the end zone. Touchdown. Johnson, of course, finished with three touchdowns. Dalton Meade had two of his own. Here's Seth Johnson once again. He'll take this one. 48 yards. Outruns everyone. He's got some quickness. Hesitates at the five and walks into the end zone. Betsy Lane will get on the board in this one. We'll see the Bobcats with the ball offensively. And this is big Cam Donaldson. He'll take it right side on the sweep to the corner of the end zone from 10 yards out. Touchdown, Bobcats. Shelby Valley wins it 42-6 to over Betsy Lane. Seth Johnson finished with 339 rushing, three touchdowns. Dalton made 246 and two scores. Eastridge will be at Betsy Lane next. Shelby Valley is open. And the Sheldon Clark Cardinals traveled to Belfry's KM Stadium to face the Pirates in AAA district play. KM Stadium rocking as always for homecoming 2017. That's Tavion Hunter taking care of business. He takes the handoff and to the end zone, 60 yards. Justin Adkins this time for the men in red. 
He'll take the pitch down the far sideline. Lots of quickness from Belfry out of the backfield. Adkins will take this one to the end zone for the touchdown. Belfry does it on the ground. This time Avery Browning will look to throw. Deep pass to Devin Varney. He makes the catch and he's drugged down near the goal line. But that long game will set up this touchdown from one yard out. Peyton Hensley punches it in for the Pirates. Belfry wins it big, 63 to eight over Sheldon Clark. Belfry now four and one. They will travel to Floyd Central next week. Sheldon Clark is at Lawrence County. And the Pike Central Hawks in week six of the Kentucky high school football season. Many teams across the Commonwealth began district play. Two of those, Pike Central and Floyd Central at the home of the Jaguars. Floyd Central in the red zone. They're looking to score. Quarterback Dylan Cottle with the keeper. He'll get to the corner, outruns everyone for a Jaguar touchdown. Here's Cottle again. He'll look deep down the near sideline. That's Brady Kahn runs under it for the catch. A few plays later from about the 25, Cottle takes a snap, doesn't like what he sees, so he'll tuck it and he'll get into open field. Makes a man miss and into the end zone to extend the early lead for the Jaguars. Now Pike Central with the ball looking to answer. That's Isaiah Hess. He'll take the handoff up the middle, finds the opening and picks up 25 before being knocked out of bounds. A few plays later in the red zone, Seth Kahn, he'll look to the air and he finds Parker Eads, makes the catch, touchdown, Hawks. At the half, it was 20 to six, Floyd Central. In the end, Pike Central rallied for a 35-34 win over Floyd Central. Seth Kahn finished with 194 yards rushing and three touchdowns. He threw for two touchdowns as well. Ethan Howard of Floyd Central had 20 tackles on the night. Next up, Eastridge is at Betsy Lane, and Shelby Valley is open. Next up, Pike Central will host Perry Central, and Floyd Central will host Belfry. Week six in the books, and the sports guys of East Kentucky Broadcasting have released their Super 7 high school football rankings for the week. The Super 7, you'll remember, includes the top seven teams, regardless of class or state line. How tough is it to break in? In other various rankings, three of this group are number one in their respective class, and another is at number two. This week's Super 7 rankings at unanimous number one, the 5-0 Johnson Central Golden Eagles. Belfry second, Mingo Central at 5-0 at number three, the Paintsville Tigers four and one at number four, Hazard's Bulldogs fifth, Pike Central makes a jump to number six, and Pikeville's Panthers at one and three are still there at number seven. Stay tuned, coming up, many more highlights and this week's AP rankings. We'll talk U Pike, we'll talk UK and more. It's Armchair Quarterback, presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Pikeville Commons. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted. Late hours and open on Saturday too. Howard Family Pharmacy. If you're looking for a fun, safe, friendly atmosphere to achieve your fitness goals, be sure to check out Heavenly Strong, a Christian fitness group that supports your physical and spiritual journey to wellness. 
Call 606-434-9914 for more information. No matter where you are on your journey to physical and spiritual wellness, Heavenly Strong is here for you. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins. For the clearest, most up-to-date look at your weather, it's the EKB Weather Cam, brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. We give you a bird's eye view of the skies above Pikeville, rain or shine, day or night. Watch for the EKB Weather Cam every day at 6 and 10, brought to you by American Heating and Cooling. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback. The Pikeville Panthers off last week. They've struggled to a one in three start after playing one of the toughest single A non-district schedules in the state. The Panthers this Friday begin district play with mountain rival, the Hazard Bulldogs. Last year's Class A runners up. I spoke to Pikeville head coach Chris McNamee about this week's showdown. I think up there we've always uh, go up there kind of thinking we're, we may be behind a little bit going in. Um, and I'm sure they think the same thing coming down here, but uh, but we know it's, all, it's always going to be a physical game. Well, we've got to keep the quarterback contained uh, defensively. Got to get a lot of people to the football. We know they're going to make some plays, but uh, we've got to be that bend, but don't break, uh, don't give up any big plays type defense. Offensively, you know, as, as good as they are defensively, we've got we've got to be able to take what they give us. Uh, we can't turn the ball over the way we have the past couple weeks or past couple games. Um, and uh, and we've got to we've got to somehow come up with a big play of our own, whether it be on offense, special teams, defense. Um, we're looking for a score from that way too. I think it's I think it's a, a classic Class A Mountain football battle. I'm not not like the old days when uh, Hillard and Paul Rains were going at it with uh, you know just them wing T and us ground and pound. Uh, both of us going to spread it out. I think both of us have. Uh, a good stable of athletes we can choose from and that are able to make plays at any time. Pikeville one and three, Hazard three and one, Friday at 7.30 at Daniel Field in Hazard. If you can't make it, complete coverage on Hit City 98.1 FM. EKB Sports and the Associated Press released its weekly rankings of Kentucky high school football teams across six classes after six weeks of the season. 11 coverage area teams receiving mention and three of six number ones. In single A, it's Paintsville in the top spot, followed by Beachwood, Hazard at number three, Pikeville in this week at number eight, and the Phelps Hornets receive votes outside the top 10. In double A, it's Danville number one, then DeSales, Mayfield, Lexington Christian, and Christian Academy of Louisville fifth, receiving votes in double A, Prestonsburg, and Shelby Valley. In Kentucky class 3A, the Belfry Pirates, at number one, then Corbin, Boyle County, Louisville Central, and E-Town. The Pike Central Hawks and Lawrence County Bulldogs receive votes outside the top 10. In Kentucky Class 4A, Johnson Central, unanimous number one. Then Wayne County, Collins, Rockcastle County, and Ashland Blazer. In 5A, Covcath at number one. Then Bowling Green and Christian County. Perry Central from the area at number six. In Kentucky Class 6A, Louisville Trinity, number one. Then St. X and Louisville Mail. EKB Radio and TV are voting members of the Associated Press football poll. The Mingo Central Miners continue to climb in the West Virginia high school football computer rankings. Last week, the Miners rolled over Polka. Beautiful night at Buck Harless Stadium on the mountain. First, we see Polka quarterback James Cook. He'll find Bronson Skeens for a completion. Cook again looking, and he'll throw downfield, but this time it's intercepted. Caleb Hurley comes up with it. Big return, nope, stopped right there. We'll see Polka take the kickoff. Kenneth Gibson, he'll look for running room, and boom, this won't last long. Great coverage by the Miners. Tough game for the Dots all night long, taking hit after hit. And it's been all Mingo Central all night long, defensively there. Now we'll see Josh Reed. He'll come up with the catch. He'll take this one to the end zone for another Miners touchdown. The final score, 62-8. Mingo Central gets the win. 
In the West Virginia High School football computer rankings this week, Single A St. Mary's number one from the area, Tug Valley at number eight. In, in West Virginia, Double A. Bluefield at number one, there's Mingo Central right behind at number two. In Triple A, it's Huntington and University tied for the top spot. Huge district games are on tap for this weekend. It's time for us to take a look at the schedule around the area. Friday, September 29th kickoffs, East Ridge at Betsy Lane. You'll hear it on The Rock 103.1. Phelps goes to Fairview. Belfry is at Floyd Central. Complete radio coverage on WDHR. Jenkins is at Hannon, West Virginia. Letcher Central goes to Harlan County. Pikeville visits Hazard. You'll hear that on Hit City 98.1 FM. East Carter is at Johnson Central, while Sheldon Clark is on the road at Lawrence County. Morgan County visits McGuffin County. Perry Central goes to Pike Central. Nod Central is at Powell County, and Leslie County is at Prestonsburg. Stay tuned, coming up, we've got U Pike and UK and a lot more armchair quarterback. It's presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Pikeville Commons. been my definition of fresh since 1983. It's the High School Football Game of the Week presented by Paul Howard Jr., Attorney at Law and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the state champion Belfry Pirates head north to challenge the surprising Floyd Central Jaguars. The Game of the Week airs Saturdays at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB-TV. Eastern Kentucky, beautiful, green, peaceful, friendly. But there's a darker side to these mountains. When crime is committed, sometimes cases go unsolved. Occasionally, the perpetrators even get away with murder. On our latest news segment, The Scene of the Crime, I'll be working with local law enforcement to help find justice for victims and their families. The Scene of the Crime, Fridays during the EKB News at 6 and 10, starting August 25th. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. Welcome back to Armchair Quarterback presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches. Last Friday, the University of Pineville Bears hosted Ave Maria, Florida in Mid-South Conference action. At the Hamley Complex, the Bears in all black and from the opening kick the Bears got a big break this time Sonny Warren with the pass completion to Braxton Whitmore for 16. He'll go on the way that's a 30 yarder by William Chandler now here's Ave Maria the offense is there they make the completion but wrapped up quickly no gain Sonny Warren again looking to throw this time Artis Clark a great spin move away from the defender and all the way to the end zone touchdown Bears. U Pike offense, not the best of nights, but good enough. That's Willie McLeod. He heads right, the play design there, nothing doing. He'll reverse field, change direction, and takes it to the end zone, untouched for the touchdown, Willie McLeod. Here's Chandler with the extra point. It's up, clears the fence, it's good. Sonny Warren again. He'll hand off this time to McLeod. He'll pick up short yardage. And again, Willie McLeod with the carry. 
the Bears will get the win. 31-7 over Ave Maria. You pike now two and two. Next up at St. Andrews, North Carolina, Saturday at 1.30. Complete coverage on Z1075, beginning at 115. Saturday night, the Kentucky Wildcats were looking to put to rest a streak that had lasted 30 years, a losing streak to the Florida Gators. Kentucky hadn't beaten the Gators since 1986. It looked like the Wildcats were going to finally end the 31-year streak. But everything changed in the fourth quarter. Kentucky up in this one. That's Bone with the touchdown catch. He'll get the feet down. The Gators took the got a touchdown and took the lead late. 28-27. The Cats will get the ball back late. They were in range for a field goal. A holding call set them back to try the 57 yard, and that comes up short. We heard from Coach Mark Stoops about the loss and how far the team has come leading up to that game. Just a uh, very, very disappointing loss. It's uh, heartbreaking to uh, our team, our fan base, to a lot of people. Um, it hurts uh, because our team has invested so much. We've worked extremely hard to get in that position, to win that game, to uh, play quality football, and to come up short hurts a lot of people. They, they really work hard during the week to put themselves in a position to be successful on Saturday, and that's uh, been like that all year and all off season. And again, it takes an awful lot of work by those players uh, to put themselves in a position to play the way they do. Um. The Kentucky Wildcats will host Eastern Michigan this Saturday at Kroger Field, formerly Commonwealth Stadium. Coach Stoops shared his thoughts on the game. Very well coached, very sound, just a very good football team. Um, they have some impressive games this year. You know, winning on the road at Rutgers uh, is, is a big win. And I thought, you know, I really know uh, – and watch, you know, Ohio and the fact that they took them to such a close game and really had a, some great opportunities to win that game is impressive. We all saw what Ohio you did against uh, um, Kansas, and so uh, these are good, sound, tough football teams. And and uh, I like the way they play. They're just they're just very sound. It's always a a big point of you know whether you win or lose games is how you play in critical situations and. Uh, we need to get back on the right track of that. For defense, and um, you know, we, you know, it's, it, we talked about it all last week, and we we need to continue to get better at it. And we are going to practice with some serious crowd noise, uh, you know, defensively to help us, you know, make us communicate better with our hand signals and different, um, you know not just the two plays that everybody think that that's um, everybody uh how do I say that that's not a that's not communication you know what I mean that's just that's a mistake Kroger Field in Lexington will see Eastern Michigan at 2 and 1 take on the 3 and 1 Cats a 4 p.m. kickoff Saturday afternoon well another week has come and gone and now we prepare for another huge weekend of high school and college football there's some great matchups this week Will the undefeated remain unbeaten? Will the winless find their first win? We'll find out. And, of course, the Bears on the road in North Carolina and the Cats at Kroger Field. We're looking forward to a great weekend and bringing you a recap next week on Armchair Quarterback. It's presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches in the Pikeville Commons. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Armchair Quarterback with Andrew Joyce. Presented by Jimmy John's of Pikeville.